morning everybody or should I say good afternoon here on the East Coast <clears throat> um, most of you who know me I'm a retired NYPD detective first grade uh, been an analyst for Fox News and CNN and Newsmax and a couple others anyway I thought I had to have to make a video you know regarding this uh, horrific mass murder in uh, in Idaho where these four people were killed in their home and the police are conducting an investigation right now and there's a lot of thoughts about it uh, a lot of innuendo regarding their investigation and uh, I think I need to comment on this well I've got 25 years experience uh, I probably have investigated with NYPD over a thousand investigations I conducted I've overlooked investigations later on after uh, I left the NYPD and ran a fraud investigation unit for Citibank and I'm hired nothing but retired New York City detectives to work at. So anyway, you, you know, I've got a lot of experience in this kind of stuff. I've investigated many, many, many homicides and many other robberies and all kinds of investigations I've conducted. So I'm a pretty well-rounded investigator, um, detective. So the first thing I want to say is, um, there's there's a lot we don't know about this case you know um, we're watching the analysis of police officers retired police officers FBI profilers and everything on uh, on TV on the news and they're trying to do the best job possible based on the information that we know bottom line is we don't know anything um, the police know everything uh, as it should be I know the fact that when I was a detective, I never talked to the press regarding an investigation because I did not want to uh, jeopardize the integrity of the investigation. And the more talking you do to the press, the more of this junk that we're hearing every day on the news regarding this homicide or this, this mass murder uh, gets a lot of people confused about what's going on. I've gone on and I've, I've spoke about this case. Um, but one of the things that I want to... Uh, talk about first before I give you thoughts on my on this case is basically um, why are police officers and detectives on this case expected to be perfectionists why why is law enforcement detective work police work the only job out there where people demand perfection in a world that doesn't, where perfection does not exist. Perfection does not exist, okay? So let's get that to the point. Police are going to make mistakes on cases. Police are going to mistake, make mistakes on homicides. It happens, all right? It doesn't totally destroy the case where now you can't solve it, all right? Because believe me, every detective out there has made a mistake at a crime scene. Every police officer has made a mistake on a crime scene. It just all depends on how big a mistake it is. That's it. So there are mistakes going to be made. All right, you got this police department in, um, in Idaho that doesn't have a lot of experience in murder cases. All right, although they tried their best. All right, and I'm not pointing the finger at anybody why this case hasn't been solved yet. There are two kinds of investigations out there, right? There's a ground ball investigation we call the NYPD, where you can solve the case in like, you know, literally two, three days, all right? Those are far and few in between. Then there's a case like this, where people are demanding answers and they have no clue what they're talking about. None, zip, zero, all right? Cases take a long time, especially a case like this. Now, this police department in Idaho has the Idaho State Police, which I'm sure is very well versed in murder investigations. They've got the resources of the FBI, which is big. It's great having the FBI on board because they have money and they've got manpower. All right. And the more heads you get into a case, all right, the more thinking you got going on and the better chance that you have to solve this case. And believe me, this case will be solved. 
It might take some time. It might take a lot more time than you think it should because you watch too many cop shows on TV where cases are uh, investigated in an hour and they got the perpetrators. Forget what you watch on cop shows. It's not the real thing. Okay? Forget it. So don't be making... Uh, Conducting your own little analysis because you watched NYPD, NYPD Blue every week or any other cop show. They're all bull it. Okay? So forget it. They're entertainment. They're fun to watch. I can't stand watching cop shows because I think they're all bull. So let's get that out of the way. All right. So we have everybody conducting analysis out there, including myself you know, based on information that's reported in the press. And as we all know, a lot of the information is not good. All right. So one of the first things I thought about this case um, was what everybody else was thinking about. Pretty much, you know, some lover or somebody came in there, murdered, uh, because, see, I can't make a real good analysis if I don't know more about the crime scene and what exactly happened in there. I have no crime scene photos, okay? I haven't been to the crime scene. I'm not part of the investigation. So I'm making an analysis based on everything that's reported in the press, and a lot of it might be wrong. A lot of it's innuendo, all right? This is what I think. So when, it, when they finally reported the fact that all the bodies were found in their beds, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I came to the conclusion basically on that. The fact is then, okay, then this was not a targeted killing. I mean, one person or one, one of the people that were murdered was not specifically targeted. How did I come to that conclusion? I came to that conclusion because the fact is that if he's, the killer specifically targeted one person, would have went into the house, killed one person, and then left. That's what would have happened. That's not what happened here. You had four people dead, all stabbed to death, based on reporting. Okay, so uh, what could it be then? You got four people dead. I thought directly mass murder. Somebody went in there specifically to kill them for some reason. We've got no idea. And then it was just reported early this morning that they don't believe that the uh, um, one person was specifically targeted. They believe all of them were targeted. Now, there is a, um, a thing called incel murders. Uh, um, where, uh, which I'm thinking of now, that are called incelibate, where uh, there's a bunch of men out there who believe that uh, women don't pay any attention to them, you know, they can't get sex with them, so therefore, to get back at them, they kill them. This could be what happened here, uh, because, like I said, I never thought based on the information that, I, that, that I've heard on this case, that it was basically a, uh, one person was specifically targeted. I mean, come on, then why kill all four people if they were all still sleeping in the bed? So then, if the information we're getting is true, the killer went from bedroom to bedroom to kill. So there's definitely a possibility this is a insolvent murders, and uh, they guy killed him because maybe he asked some of the girls out. They didn't go, want to go out with him. Maybe he didn't think they were paying enough attention to him. I mean, I don't know. You know the psycho psychology behind all these killers out here is, 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 is nuts. I mean, you've got your profilers out there who are picking up. I personally think, based on the information, and I could be wrong, folks, just like every analysis out there could be wrong because we don't know specifics regarding this crime, just what's been reported. The killer lives close by. That's what I think based on, you know, that's our job to actually, you know, go on the air and talk about a case like this based on our experience. And I've got a lot of experience and so does everybody else. So listen, my idea is just as good as anybody else's. The fact that I kept on, you know, talking to different people 
you know, regarding this case, and uh, um, we, we, we don't, uh, other detectives who I spoke to, we, we've been talking about this case since it happened. So that's uh, um, trying to get in our minds exactly why something like this had happened. Now, I do have a program that I do. It's called Streets March for College Kids. And to teach them how to react to situations like this, you know, the fact, the fact that they went ahead and called uh, their friends before they called the police when there's supposedly a bloody uh, crime scene doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And it's because they're young and they don't know what the hell they're doing. They think they're going to call their friends instead of the police. You know, you get involved in any incident like this or you stumble upon a crime scene, don't call your friends. You called 911 right away. You know, we had a crime scene that was messed up, you know, basically destroyed because some of the friends came in to take a look and one of the friends said, listen, somebody better call the cops. You can't do that. All right. So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's just sit back and wait to see what happens. You know, I'm tired of amateurs out there talking about this. And, uh, you know, the only experience I got is from watching cop shows on TV. Give the cops a break. Let them investigate the case. All right? Just let them investigate the case. They're going to come to a conclusion. We're going to get this killer or killers someday. You know, uh, it could take a while. It could be months from now. It could be two years from now. Or we can get lucky and get a break and it can happen next week. We don't know. And all the guys out there like me with all the experience that are making, uh, conducting analysis based on what we know is only best guess. That's it. All right. So uh, I hope you learned something from this. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on uh, Fox, you know, within the next week or so talking about this case. So I'm very interested in what's going on. And uh, until next time, guys, don't pick up any wooden nickels, will you? Bye-bye.